Hello and welcome back to part 23 of our FM22 Let's Play where we are back with Blythe Spartans and we have just been promoted. Today we're going to have a look at our season review, get some transfers done and get prepared for our new season in the National League. And first up, it is the most important part of the episode, the season review. Let's have a look at how we did in our 23-24 season then. So our new arrivals, first of all, We've got Patrick Gamble, 20-year-old centre-back who came to us on a free from Blackburn. 26 appearances made, 8 goals and an assist with a 7.42 rating. That's fantastic. The board are very, very happy with that signing. We also had John Bellowan come in from Sheffield United. He's ended up playing 44 games for us this season. Gamble probably would have played that many as well if he hadn't got that injury. So he was out for probably about half of the season. But Bellowan here making 44 appearances, three goals for him, three assists for him, 7.31 rating Majira as well is coming on a free from Manchester United 37 games he started for us with 19 goals and seven assists 7.28 rating I think Majira is probably the best of our signings despite where he is on the ratings here just for how much he changed the side and I'm hoping we can keep hold of him this season and he can continue banging in goals in the National League but if he doesn't we do have our backup striker Burrell he obviously came in mid-season 22 appearances he ended up making and then eight off of the bench 15 goals and five assists so actually he probably has a better goal to gain ratio than Magia. I just think Magia offers a little bit more as a striker he's got more potential and he does bring others into the game a bit more than Burrell does Cole McKinnon come over from Rangers on a free as well 47 games played for him Forget how long these non-league seasons are three goals five assists a 7.11 rating he's been playing as our deep lying playmaker he will definitely be staying there for the season ahead unless we find someone absolutely phenomenal to put in that role but I don't see that we're going to be doing that with the budgets we have got Isaac Fletcher another one 21 years old coming on a free for Middlesbrough he's played 45 games as well four goals 11 assists for Fletcher from that box to box midfielder role which seems like a weird place to be getting assists from but I guess he is close to the box and he's just playing in those final balls 7.09 rating for him Again, I think he will be still a first choice starter next season. Harry McHugh obviously was on loan from Wigan. He's made starts. He's played probably a lot of games, but sort of half and half in terms of starts and sub appearances. Four goals and six assists, though. He's been very, very useful when we have got him 7.06 rating. I love that the board is sort of unhappy with the loan fee as well and the wage contribution. I think we're paying about 200 quid a week for him, which is the lower end of our high end of players that are being paid that sort of wage i think he's good value for it if we have a look maybe we can bring him back on loan this season we kind of see where he sits in terms of ability for the national league before we make a decision on that we've then got jacob carney our 23 year old goalkeeper i genuinely think he'll probably stay as our first choice goalkeeper for the national league i mean 42 appearances no goals no assists but if we have a quick look at jacob carney over here because this is the interesting stat for the goalkeeper 36 appearances 25 conceded and 16 clean sheets he's got a really good rating for the season and the bit that i'm always worried about when i'm looking at goalkeepers do they concede less than they play and he has conceded substantially less than he's played so i think jacob carney will be still there as our first choice goalkeeper again unless i find something absolutely fantastic in the transfer market marcus lawrence then a 19 year old center back for man united he was only ever meant to be a backup but he ended up playing a decent chunk of games purely due to that injury from gamble he's done really really well when he has come in 7.03 rating his only main issue i think with lawrence is he's a little bit inconsistent which is probably just due to his age but he will be staying with us next season and hopefully we can help him develop a little bit now we're in a better league we've also got jake leak who's over on the left hand side he's our backup left back we're going to see as well a lot of these it's not going to see where they've transferred in and out to because i think they are on non-contracts still we'll have a look who we want to keep and who we want to get rid of jake leak might not be quite good enough for the national league so someone we need to have a look at sam bird obviously on loan performed perfectly well when we did bring him in he's been a nice backup option robbie fraser is another one we'll have a look whether we keep him next season or not he was bought in as a sort of higher end potential youth player hasn't entirely worked out the way we would want it despite him ended up playing a lot of games 
it's more just going to be we'll make a decision on whether we think he can grow into that role or not. I think he will probably be staying around. It's just whether he's going to be the first choice left back or whether he's going to be the backup for that position. Transfers out uh, this season. Rob Harker, obviously, at the start of the season. Kevin McHaty, uh, Mitchell Liddle, Jack Young went as well. Jordan Slew, Rob Ramshaw and Jake Turner. A season to remember for us then because so we did end up winning the Vanarama National League but in the FA Cup we were expected to reach the first round we actually got to the second round we had an absolutely shocking home attendance for that oh dear and as we can see we went on a decent run before losing 2-1 to Charlton Athletic in the FA Trophy we were absolutely woeful I, we're not even going to talk about that I mean we went out to Witten Albion who were below us in the league 1-0 um, right before that match against Walsall I think or was it before the match against Charlton no it was before the match against Charlton so we got knocked out of two cups in the same week what a week biggest win then a 6-0 win against Murphy. Uh, was that in the North League? Yeah, it was. Um, so 6-0 win there, hat-trick for Burgess and then three other players getting on the score sheet. We've also got the match to remember, which is a 4-0 win against Scarborough Athletic. Sure. And then goal of the season is from McKinnon, which was in the first minute of this match against Farsley. Have a quick gander at that one and see what it was like. Here we go then. So through to Magia here. Magia out on the right pulled back to Sharif out to McKinnon and it's just a very very long drive from range can't really knock that very very good from him it's a decent goal we'll be we'll take that one goal of the season then for him finances wise a lot of it has gone down which is to be expected obviously we did get relegated so less sponsorship less broadcast revenue corporate hospitality our competition prize money actually went up which I don't entirely understand given we got knocked straight out of the FA Trophy, but I guess it's an improved run in the FA Cup has helped out with our prize money and match day commercials down as well. Shirt sales, McKinnon, Magia, Fletcher, Burrell and Richley Holzler are the main sellers. McKinnon being the top one, Magia being in there as well. And then this is our lineup of the season then. So Carney and Goal are back for Fraser, Gamble, Bellowan, Sharif as our back four, that seems about right. Brookwell, Fletcher, McKinnon in midfield, again, about right. Grattan, Burgess and Magia up front, that seems pretty much like our first choice 11 for the season. We did get to manager of the month for November. Um, yay, I guess. <laughs> and then club awards, player of the season goes to Jacob Grattan. Young player of the season goes to Gamble, uh, as does signing of the season. Goal of the season, as we just saw to McKinnon. Top goal scorer was Magia with 19 goals. Gratton with the most assists with 15 and with the most player of the matches with 6. Average rating goes to Gamble with 7.4. And then we've got most passes complete per 90 minutes, which is, again, always a weird one. No competition awards there, though. Record breakers, most goals by a player in a match. Burrell scoring 4 in a match. Most goals in a league match is also Burrell with the same amount with 4. Worst discipline goes to Brookwell. 12 yellow cards and a red card. Yeah, he does play as a ball winner midfielder and it's a lot of games in the season. So that's probably about right. Fastest goal was Cole McKinnon with 33 seconds, which is that goal of the season. And Marcus Lawrence, our 19-year-old centre-back. At the time, 18 is now our youngest goal scorer. As we can see, finished top of the league. We've got a nice trophy. It was a good season for us all in all. Oh, Barnsley managers just got fired. Where are Barnsley? Let's have a quick look. Barnsley are in the Skybet Championship, but you're 21st. Are you going to stay in the Skybet Championship this season because of that? How do I have a look? League table, uh, title holders Everton. So at some point, Everton got relegated and then went back up as champions from the championship. Oh, FM22 is a weird world. I guess that's not out of the realms of possibility in real life, though. Barnsley are going to be staying in the championship. That could be an interesting job to have a look at, I guess. But I think for the moment, we 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 stick with what we've been doing. We we'll stick with Blythe Spartans. We did have um job, I say offers. We had job interviews with Derby County and with Ipswich Town. Both of them have decided to go with other managers, though. So we are still here at Blythe Spartans, and we'll probably be staying here for at least another season, I would think. Very much depends how it goes and if we get a bigger club come in for us. We have then got the best overall 11 squad and we've got some players going there. Magia's gone in there. However, 
Where's he gone? He's over on the right wing and not up front. Ugh. Baker Grattan, Brookwell, Fletcher, Bellawan, Carney and Gamble are all going into there. So the starting level now is Max Johnston. We've got back four of Lidl, Brownsword, Buddle and Sharif. Brookwell, Fletcher and Reed in midfield. Grattan and Magia on the wings with Brown Sterling up front. It's a little bit of a weird one, but we're... We, okay, fair enough. We've added a lot of players to that uh, sort of first choice 11 though, so... We'll take it it's been a good season board one to discuss the club's long-term vision and outline their initial expectations what we got here play high tempo pressing football which is what we had already possession football defensively solid football and make the most of set pieces work within a wage budget try not to get relegated we're going to negotiate this just because i've learned from last time we're going to get rid of offensive football yeah because the problem we had last time is board weren't happy with that straight away but we literally got promoted not really got a lot of money and then had been expected to be a brick wall at the back and it's just not going to happen so we'll get rid of that that's fine and now we need to talk to these guys uh what do we say to these guys we've got well, congratulations on getting promoted mid table finish probably not mid table finish not get involved in a relegation battle avoid relegation <laughs> I'm proud of our efforts to avoid relegation this year. I mean, we won the we won the title. I think we did a bit more than avoid relegation. Let's have a look at this one. Yep, awesome. We'll be adding to the squad. We're happy with that. Thanks. Go on your holidays. Let me sort out some transfers, guys. Thank you for attending the meeting. And I guess that is now what we go and do is sort out the transfers. We're definitely going to be bringing some faces in. As you can see, actually, there, we're bringing in two faces tomorrow, which we can have a quick look at. They are both free transfers on end of contract signing. So we'll have a look at those ones in a second when they happen. OK, so here is our two signings. We've got David Gray and Run Deister. We're going to call Run Dice. Let's have a look at David Gray first. David Gray coming on a non-contract, so we could just instantly get rid of him. But he looks like he could be quite good. He's an 18-year-old centre-back. He's currently three and a half star ability with potential to be five star. So him and Gamble looking about the same sort of level. If we have a look at his report a second. Current National League North standard player with potential to be a Skybet League One standard. So definitely could be an important player for us next season. I think he looks pretty decent. He's got decent determination, good bravery, which is nice to have in a defender as well. Very good jumping reach. So I think he could end up being a pretty decent member of our squad next season. We've then got Run Dystra, who I pretty much bought in. Again, he's another centre-back or a midfielder. And obviously his ability at the moment is potentially a little bit lower than we'd like it. But he's got some decent potential so he's definitely worth bringing in he's coming on a free for our man united because we like nicking their players apparently national league north standard player potentially be sky bet league two could be another one he's they're going to be nice to have around at the very least even if they don't end up as sort of first choice players i think they'll be very very nice to at least have here but for now we need to go and rebuild the rest of the squad just having a look a second which we can't because there's no one here there we go just having a look down this list a second. I mean, Gamble's wanted. I don't want to be getting rid of Gamble. Um, Magia, I think, is wanted as well. So we're going to be offering him a new contract. So we want to keep hold of him. Bradley James, he'll be going either way, either because we sell him or because he leaves on a free transfer. But he wants to be going. Um, I want to unlist Burgess. He's still saying he wants to go. I'd like to keep him, but is there's definitely the potential he could go. Brookwell as well is saying that he's going... We'll attempt to prevent that if we can. Now we've got promoted, he might be a bit happier. Brown Sterling's going to be going as well. So we can see Sharif is wanted. Uh, Bellawan is also wanted. Lucas, uh, Lewis Pitton obviously is on a non-contract. So that isn't anything to do with him wanting to leave. But Richie Holzer also wants to leave. There, there's a there's a load of players. Brown Sword, another one who's going to be going at the end of the season. So we've got to go and probably rebuild a decent portion of the squad. And we don't particularly have a lot of money to do it, as we can see. We've got 19,000 here, but only just under 3,000 pound in wage budget. Obviously, we're going to get rid of players. We're going to have a little bit more. I'm going to go make some transfers and I'll be back when something interesting happens, probably around the 1st of July. Well, we've not quite got to the 1st of July and this is not what I expected to be coming back to, but we have been offered another job. 
We went to the interview for this one. This is for Barnsley, who are in the Sky Bet Championship, albeit barely they finished 21st last season, which is just one point outside of the relegation zone, or one position, sorry, outside of the relegation zone. So we have a quick look at where they finished. We can see in the league table, Huddersfield, Sunderland, Derby getting relegated. Barnsley finishing three points outside that relegation zone. And as such, looks like they have fired their manager. But they have come in and offered us a job on 2.7k a week. If we have a look at our contract currently, we re-signed one with Blythe Spartans just over a week ago. We are currently, if we have a look at our contract, on £625 a week. So this is substantially more as we can see see we're wanted by Barnsley and obviously the bid here from Barnsley and because of the realism factor of this save we're gonna have to go and take this job it's pretty unfortunate I do I, I really am enjoying the save with Blythe Spartans but because of the realism factor of the save and the fact we do want to go on and win the Champions League we've got a better chance of building our reputation at Barnsley because of them being in the Skybet Championship and from a wage point of view, obviously, if someone comes in and offers you 2.7k a week, you're currently on 600 and a bit. I would hope you'd go and take that job unless it was something absolutely horrific that you really, really didn't want to do. But if it's a like for like job, I think you'd go and take it. They do want to put a relegation wage drop in and a promotion wage rise as well. Let's see. Can we get that down to 30? Can we make this £3,000 maybe? They're happy to offer that three thousand pound then to go over to barnsley on a two-year contract they have said though if we do get relegated they won't keep us in the job so we have to go and survive but here we go new manager at barnsley then this has turned into an interesting video this was all about the review at Blythe spartans and building for the future we had already put some transfers in place at spartans although not a lot of them but now we've moved on to barnsley uh, we arrived for a record of 77 wins, 28 draws and 44 defeats. A lot of those 44 defeats obviously coming in that season. We got relegated. So in our second season in charge at Blythe Spartans, we also have just won the league title and we didn't actually apply for this job. Um, Barnsley approached us and went, do you want to come for an interview? Which obviously we have then gone to. Barnsley finished the season in 21st place last season, as we can see failing to win any of their previous eight games. So it looks like they had a late poor run of form, maybe. That's made them drop down a little bit. We'll have a look at that in a second. Current season, yes, the 21st. They got knocked out of the FA Cup in the third round, knocked out the Carabao Cup in the second round. And let's have a quick look. They got a three-star reputation. Fierce rivals, Sheffield United. I think I had a quick look. Sheffield Wednesday in Leeds. Are there other ones as well as Huddersfield? But Huddersfield won't be in the league this season with us. I don't think Leeds will be either. I assume they're still in the Premiership. But who knows? I'm not entirely certain of that. The club enjoyed their best spell of success during the 1910. So a long time ago. And uh, definitely a club for us to come and rebuild a little bit. It is showing us here our what is considered our best 11. But I think we'll have a proper look at that in a minute. And this is the club vision for here. So they want us to sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. Develop players using the club's youth system, which is an interesting one. Because I've already seen what their um, sort of junior academy coach and youth recruitment and stuff is like. And it's, it's not great. That's a bit of a spoiler. Play entertaining football. Play high tempo pressing football. Don't sign players over the age of 30. Five-year plan, just work within the wage budget. Sign players to sell for profit and a minimum of two-year contracts for first-team players. And this season, they just want us to avoid relegation. And after that, just continue remaining in the championship. Hopefully, we can do a little bit better than that. But before we make any sort of decision on that, I guess we need to have a look at the team. And here is that team. It's a 23-man first-team squad. We've got this arranged in order of current ability. We'll have a quick look. So if we highlight our top 10 players, we might be able to get a little bit of an idea of what sort of formation we might want to play. So our best player at the club seems to be this guy currently, Ramal Palmer. So Ramal Palmer is 25 years old. He can play as a defensive midfielder, as a deep-line playmaker, or as a central midfielder, or as a 
a central attacking midfielder. So anyway, a three in the middle there, all as playmakers, an advanced playmaker in that role. He looks all right. I don't think he looks too bad. He doesn't look like he'll improve at this point. Last season, last two seasons then at Barnsley, he's got over a seven rating. And that's when they've been for performing pretty poorly. So he looks like he could be quite good. We've then got Clark Odor. He's got a little bit of room to grow. Let's have a look at his report as well. A uh, championship player with decent Premier League player potential. That's the sort of player we do want in the team. So where do we want to play him? I mean, he seems to be all over the park. I don't think we'll be playing him as a left midfielder. I'll be surprised if we end up going with like a 4-4-2. A we could play him as a left back. He seems quite a depth back there. Or we could play him as a left attacking midfielder, potentially as a winger. Or even out on the right as an inverted winger, maybe. But again, he got some decent potential there, decent pace on him. How old is he? 24 years old. I mean, if we play him right, he could end up being a decent player. Got Brad Collins. Brad Collins, formerly of Chelsea, I think. Yeah, formerly a Chelsea goalkeeper. Been at uh, Barnsley for a few seasons now. However conceding a lot more goals than he is playing so i don't know if that is our forever goalkeeper currently skybet championship level so he should be decent at this level but doesn't look like he is i mean that could be we could put some of it down to a leaky defense as i said about um our Blythe spartans goalkeeper i prefer my goalkeepers to be conceding less than they're playing and brad collins here has a trend of not doing that so we'll have a look and see if we want to keep him as our first choice goalkeeper Woodrow as well I noticed he was our striker I mean that's a fairly decent now again let's have a look at his report good championship player unlikely to improve yeah he's pretty decent in dribbling finishing and first touch which is always nice and he's got some reasonable pace 29 years old I mean he's not scoring bags of goals but he's scoring a consistent amount of goals so he could be quite decent. We've got to Junio Bakuna. It's a decent looking player as well. Again, uh, Skybet Championship unlikely to improve. But again, it, it, this is very much... He seems to be able to play all over the place. So play him as a central midfielder, a defensive midfielder, either wing. So he could be quite valuable for the side. We've got Jordan Williams, who does seem to be a pretty nailed on right back or maybe a right wing back. But preferably a right back uh 24 years old not going to improve that much and oh so skybet league one player and that is our what's that six six best player at the club that's slightly concerning we've got Callum Britton as well okay he's a skybet championship player so that makes no sense but all right fine he's another right back we've got Noah Chivers here skybet league one could be a championship player I think I'm beginning to see the problem here let's have a look at Liam Kutching uh Liam Liam Kitching sorry league one player okay and then we go down from there we've got Edmondson league one player right I think we've identified the problem already and that's a lot of the team are not really of the level to be playing in the championship they're more at a level to be playing in the Skybet league one we don't have a lot of money for transfers I mean we've been given a budget of 3.3 million and a bit of wage budget but if we look at the wage budget that's actually leaving us not really a huge amount in terms of wages we have got a little bit there in terms of transfers and obviously we haven't hit the first of july yet and we do get those free transfers that released so maybe we could make something happen there but i think for the moment i just need to work out what i need our tactic to be and then i'll have a little look see and show you guys right so i've had a little bit of a fiddle with a tactic and come up with this we've got a 4-2-3-1 wide formation which i think means that we fit most of the better players inside the squad with this we've got collins and goal or door that we were talking about we've ended up using as a left back because I think we don't really have anyone else that's a suitable left back at the moment. We've got these two guys, Kitching and Edmondson, in defence. As we've pointed out with both of them, though, Skybet League 1 for Kitching. Edmondson, League 1 as well, unlikely to improve. So that's somewhere that definitely could do with some improvement. Williams, also Skybet League 1. So most of our defence, not really up to scratch. We've then got Bakuna playing as a ball-winning midfielder. He 
could be good enough so I don't think we need to replace him immediately off of Bora I could improve a little bit but at the moment Skybet League one player he's playing as a box-to-box -box midfielder Shivers is Skybet League one as well Palmer by far our best player uh, Skybet Championship player at the moment had the best rating for the last couple of seasons we've got Izzy Brown who I didn't notice was in the squad playing out on the right it says playing as an inverted winger we're ignoring that because his crossing is 10 but if we're playing as an inside forward he's got a 12 finishing attribute so inside forward on support as it is and then Woodrow up front again that's not ideal because he isn't scoring lots and lots of goals but there isn't really anyone else to put there so I think that's as good as we can get it at the moment having a look over here we can see we're not winning a lot this is what we're playing at the moment looking at the info we're all right on in terms of money by the looks of it Sheffield United Sheffield Wednesday and Leeds obviously showing up as our rivals and then Huddersfield Doncaster and Rotherham just to let you guys know and yeah we've not been in the premiership at all in recent memory highest finish in uh 2020-21 season in fifth but the last couple of seasons 19th and 21st we're not doing fantastic looking at our facilities though when it says yeah we want to uh, use the youth team that's great but the youth facilities they're okay junior coaching and youth recruitment however but i mean they're not even bang average i mean junior coaching is just awful so that's something we probably need to improve i feel like this is going to be a long long rest to the summer obviously we've got a little bit to go we're only on the 19th of june review ongoing negotiations so this is people were offering contracts by the look of it i need to have a bit look at those oh look chivers is on about leaving i mean that's great but i don't think we have anyone to replace him with or oh, this could be a very very long season and it does mean we need to substantially change the episode now because i need to go and spend some major time with barnsley working out how to make this into a club that's capable of surviving um the relegation drop i feel like that might be quite a challenge but uh based on that we're gonna have to wait until next episode to see how i do obviously not quite what we were expecting today we expect to see all the transfers but given i've already had to spend quite a lot of time on this video showing you a season review and reviewing barnsley as we've come through the front door i think it's probably best to end the video here and we'll have a look at the transfers i make for barnsley at the start of tuesday's episode which in theory should be our first two matches with the club as well the start of our season with them now hopefully we can uh at least survive and get a decent sort of mid-table finish i feel would be a good good position for this club at the end of the season if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the channel please do drop a like down below and while you're here why not hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well and you can follow along with the rest of this series as we attempt to survive i guess with barnsley football club until next time though guys thank you very much for watching today's episode and if you do want to watch some more content before tuesday why not have a look at that video next